Okie dokie. All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Leonie Smith. I'm one of the co-founders of People of Color for Nonviolent Communication, or POC for NVC. And I'm here today with Sarah Payton and Mika Menowa, um, who are joining me as we take a closer look at the um, at a particular video that's been very um, much well played, which is a Amy Cooper, um, a woman who called the police on African American men and Christian Cooper um, while they were in Central Park on Memorial Day. And we're taking a closer look at this video. So um, we're inviting the commentary of Sarah and Mika, who both have um, uh, do education and have information to share with us about what's happening in the brain and body during these moments. Um, so if you want to introduce yourself, uh, I'd like to start with you, Sarah. Well, thank you, Leonie. Thanks for inviting me to be here. Um, my name is Sarah Payton, and uh, I am deeply interested in the convergence of relational neuroscience and the way we use language, and especially the way we use language to heal trauma. So stepping into this particular trauma field, has a lot of intensity and uh, just want to say up front that there are many levels of complexity for me around the whole thing. Thank you, Sarah. Mika. I'm Mika Maniwa, um, Japanese Canadian, and I'm really interested in uh, racialized, uh, being racialized and the trauma of being racialized. So I've learned a lot with Sarah and I'm really excited about this particular focus, Leone. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, no problem. Really excited to move forward. So basically what we're going to be doing is, um, as I said, we want to take a closer look at this video, um, having a, a want to walk away with a better understanding of what's happening with the brain and body and also what interventions um, are available to us when we um, witness these types of incidents. And so we'll be watching the video and kind of pausing and inviting commentary from uh, Sarah and Mika and questions from myself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share the video. We're going to get it started and just going to load it up here and then we're going to share screen and we'll get started. Okay, I'm just maximizing it making sure that we have good volume, and we'll start. Would you please stop? Sir, I'm asking you to stop. Please stop. don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking pause, you to stop. pause right there. Sure. So what we see right at the beginning is that she's trying to get the leash on the dog. Mm. So when what we don't see before the start of the video is that she's... Um, that he has taken a dog treat out because she won't leash her dog. And he said to her, you don't want, you're going to do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And he's going to treat her dog. I think maybe to take the dog away or to be able to hold on to the dog until she leashes it. I don't know what the thing with the treats is, but she, my guess is that she's starting with a sense that he's threatening the dog and that she needs to put the leash on the dog. But then she sees that he's recording her. And this suddenly becomes oh, the overwhelming thing that she then is talking about and, and trying to make stop for the rest of the video. And she becomes, she completely loses track of the dog, <laughs> starts hauling the dog around. And we know uh, that th this is one of the horrifying things about stepping into this particular trauma field we know that m more people were worried about the dog afterwards than were worried about Christian Cooper. Mm -hmm. That there was this flood of calls into the ASPCA asking them to take the dog away from her because mm -hmm. the dog was being mistreated without mm -hmm. any kind of s social echo for mm -hmm. the, I mean, there was some social echo for Christian Cooper, but not the way that that response was about the dog. So this is one of the things about the, that's horrifying for me about our whole take on race and mm -hmm. systemic racism and white supremacy. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's a huge so warning. He's trying to just solve a problem, which is to get the dog uh, not to run after birds. Yeah. And she's perceiving threat 
and she's starting to just lose it. Yeah, but she's losing it more about being recorded. Being recorded seems to be her nightmare, which is really ironic considering that, of course, she's lost her life in terms of her professional life and her reputation from having been recorded. So uh, she was right to be horrified that she was being recorded. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah. then now here, this is important. And Mika, you said you saw a look on her face. Have we seen it yet? Or is no, it not yet? Not yeah. yet. Okay. Yeah. So right yeah. now we can see her face. It's probably the best time we can see her face, but it's still pretty blurry. What we see in her face is concentration. We're not seeing the signs of fear. She's coming close to him, which is not a sign of fear. She's left whatever fear response she may have had that we didn't get to see about the dog and the treats. And now she's in some different, she's in a different space. She's coming close to him. We don't come close to people that we are scared of. We try to get away from them. So, so yeah, go so ahead. Type go. Of aggression or um, what would you name it? I would name, there's not a lot that we can see in her forehead. I don't know if she's like, sometimes people have cosmetic stuff that stops them from having any forehead lines, but she doesn't have either the lines of fear or the lines of rage right now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying above the mask is where we mm -hmm. can see the fine lines of Mm -hmm. like, what what are you looking at? Yeah, well, especially here, we can see both, you know, anger and fear is is a, a response where you can actually see the whites of the eyes above the pupil so we're not seeing either of those things on her face and i don't know you know i, I wish that we got to look at her face frame by frame to do this because it would tell us so much but mm-hmm. my guess is that right now she's trying to solve a problem which is that she's being recorded and she's totally against being recorded. She's trying to take the phone away from him or turn it off or cover it. And he's saying, please don't come near me. Please. They're both so polite through the whole thing. Please don't come near me. And he's stepping away. We see him stepping away and then we can keep going now. Yeah. Okay. The other thing too, that I'm wondering if if you want to comment on is the fact that there is a third person there. Christian Cooper was walking with his sister. And she oh, is did not. Did she take with... the video? Oh no, she was the one who posted the video. Yeah, she posted the video. Yeah, she was horrible. I find that very interesting that there's no yeah. engagement. Yeah. In, um, yeah. in any of these so far, mm-hmm. with the, with with his sister who was standing with him. Okay, so we'll continue until the next pause. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. Please, please call the cops. We still aren't please seeing any back. change in her eyebrows. African American man threatening my life. Please okay, tell me now. What... Stop it again. This is outrage. Mm. This is not fear. This is, and, and this is where I think we might be seeing, it's, when, the first time I saw this video, I thought, what the heck is going on? Here we are, New York City, where is the cussing? Where is the fuck you? Where, mm-hmm. is, the, um, where is the streetwise aggression? You know, nothing. I was like, what the heck's going on? This woman is not a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. And, and then she continues, both of them continue with this great politeness through this absolutely horrifying expression, I think, of the banality of evil, mm-hmm. of the way in which, you know, and I myself, I'm not saying that this poor woman uh, whose life has been destroyed is, is an evil woman. I'm saying I can find in myself as someone who's a white bodied person in white supremacy, I can find those places in myself, those islands of privilege and immunity mm-hmm. where I want to leverage the system in, on my behalf rather than, and that's the banality of evil is that we are unable to actually understand that people that we have othered still exist. Mm-hmm. So, so this is a bit what we're stepping into. I think she's appalled and outraged that someone who she, this is pure speculation, I don't know her, that someone who she may consider to be lower than herself socially, how can this person be asking her to leash her dog? Where does this person have the authority to have any demands on her at all? Mm -hmm. And so now she begins to leverage her social location. 
Well, because he said no. Yeah. She tried to get him to change his behavior. Right. And now she's completely focused on controlling the environment yeah. rather than owning her own reactivity. Right. Seeing the, uh, the, the person, the two people in front of her face is human. Yeah. Yeah, she's not, she's not in relationship. She, I, I have a sense she maybe actually panicked about being recorded. Mm. Okay. All right. Shall we continue? Yeah. All right. Excuse me. And so that's stop again. So then here she is. They're so polite. She says, "Excuse me," before she calls. Excuse me. I'm going to take my attention away from you to call the police to try to kill you. You know. Yeah. I'm talking. <laughs> she has Canadian roots, so. <laughs> kind of veil of politeness <laughs> over disconnection and mm. um, yeah, mm. cold violence. Yeah. It's familiar to us. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African American, who has a bicycle helmet. So He's still very polite, right? My dog. Completely I even tone. No sign of fear. African American man, I am in second part. He's holding me and threatening myself and my dog. She starts to escalate. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please stop. She's the car. not getting the response she needs. She escalates again. I'm in central part of the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. She leashes a dog. He says thank you there. Con continuing. Harvard graduate, a pioneering comp. <laughs> Here we go. Great. It was all like, thank you for your performance. I'm caught yeah. on tape now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think he's saying thank you for her leashing the dog. Because that's when she, that's when you see the click of the leash actually going into the dog's collar. I see. Yeah. So, and that's why he stops recording because she's done what he needs her to do. He's protected his birds. Yeah, so I, I, I think one of the things that I am, that I continually um, am super curious about is the thing that you were just commenting on around the escalation. Each time she says, African-American African -American man threatening me, that we start off with a quiet, then it goes to some kind of, it, it, it increases somewhat in intensity, and then it just like explodes into pure panic. Uh, this person is threatening or per pure performance yeah 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 so yeah. that she's she's calling upon she's not getting the response that she wants of the system coming to her defense mm -hmm. and so she's escalating uh, with to to, be, to convey urgency she's yeah. trying to speak the language of the person who's on the other phone so that they match her desire to have She's consciously Parties. clicking play for the the white woman as um, victim. Yeah, of... yeah. I don't know how conscious it is because I do think that we're with her in a state of panic. But yes, mm. she's definitely trying to find what is the re response. What is the the what is what? How can she elicit this response that she wants? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such an interesting point because there has been a lot of obviously uh, conversation and dialogue about. The things that happened in this video and particularly looking at amy cooper's behavior and it fitting into the larger narrative that's happening around this idea of, of a karen of a problematic white woman who will call and leverage the police or power um, um, and how that feeds into this long existing kind of trope within white supremacy of white women being helpless or being princesses or needing to be rescued and kind of generating circumstances in which they will be rescued yeah. um, by a strong man or a strong force such as yeah. the police yeah. in this case. Yeah. And it so ties us into the history of the police, which even begins with, with uh, their, their work to recapture escaped slaves, mm -hmm. people who were enslaved, uh, that there's, there's such a history for us in North America, 
not uh, I'm not speaking for Canada, but for us in the United States, there's such a history of using our police on behalf of white-bodied people to uh, keep our property and and um, yes, yeah, focused on uh, on the people in power keeping their property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just in Canada, the Northwest Mounted Police, which is the forerunner of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, um, it came into existence to take to um, to take land away from Indigenous people. Yeah. That was, mm -hmm. And to, has, has roots in enforcing injustice. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly it. Yeah. yeah, so it's really interesting when I start to think about then what it means to um well it brings in um the 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 piece around how to intervene because as you were saying earlier uh sarah it's so complex right and so we're in a situation in which someone is dysregulated um they are their body says one thing I'm not afraid, and yet they're using lots of language about around being afraid and being threatened. They're um, calling in on a powerful force to come and um, basically rescue them or to um, make the thing that is unpleasant for them stop. Um, and then they are um, continuing to, um, w w as we witness, escalate their their distress as you said like in a very like performative way um possibly because they're not being met with the same level or they don't have a sense of being met uh, when they're calling the police um in the sense of urgency that they're generating like it's not being mirrored back to them etc and so it so it's all these things are present and so much more right because so much more. Whole, yeah the whole, the whole thing about what's happening with the face and what that means and you know, there certainly other things are can be named here, like the impact of we talked about, like white supremacy, and certainly that's where the lethality comes in. Yeah. Um, but then also around like patriarchy, you know, at what point does like, um, you know, mental distress, all these different things are coming into play. So when we're, if we were observers of this action, um, and with a fuller understanding, such as we're developing in this conversation of what was actually happening. I'm really curious about us maybe taking a look at the video again and looking at are there, where are the moments of intervention and how does our understanding of what's happening, um, the, the complexity of what's happening shape the kind of interventions that we could potentially do. Um, and I'm interested in that perspective from, uh, so intervention obviously from a witness perhaps that's watching this incident. Also curious what, um, someone who's the target of this kind of action? Is there something that they could do to um, support what's happening in terms of this, of a, a person who's dysregulated and, and targeting them? And also interested in the perspective of the person who is dysregulated. Um, and in this case, we're talking about Amy Cooper. Um, and it could uh, be more generalized to people who call the police on people of color or um, black people. What are the ways that um, a person from that position can perhaps get to a place where they're less dysregulated. And the reason why I'm curious about this is because one of the responses to this kind of video has been that there is um, recommendations on what you can do instead of calling the police or like logic models about, you know, do these five steps and you'll be able to call the police. There's actually um, a document called Alternative to Police that I think came from Surge and DC will certainly put the link um, for it when we um, publish this, that has like a five-step process for calling, for making a decision about calling the police. And one of the things that, I, that occurred to me when I was looking at the five-step process is that it requires a logical mind. Yeah, um, yeah. Which isn't present here. Right. <laughs> they're very polite, but they're not logical. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
can't walk yourself through a flow chart. <laughs> Although the man who is filming appears to stay very self-regulated through the whole thing. Mm. We don't hear any panic in his voice. When mm -hmm. she says, I'm going to call the cops, he says, please call the cops, please. You know, again, that incredible politeness, you know, mm -hmm. that they're both doing. And then when she finally leashes the dog, he says, thank you. And turns off the video. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. he seems, he seems, entirely focused on his birds yeah. on the safety and well-being of the ground nesting birds mm -hmm. yeah Wonderful. yep that's so true yeah um so i'm wondering if we're ready to take a second look at it or sure sure we'll start okay so i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again and here we are um Having a little bit of difficulty here. So we'll try that one more time. Sharing my screen. And here we go. And we'll start again. And again, please just let me know if you'd like me to pause. There we go. So before we even start, <laughs> before we even start, Leonie. I, I believe that there were a couple of interventions that would have been possible bef before mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. And one of them would have been, because look, see, she's, she's going to leash right now. Yes. And uh, one of the things that would be possible is for him to let her know that they're just dog treats. They aren't poison. Mm. And to be able to say what it is he's trying to do mm. with the dog treats. I don't believe he has this responsibility, but it's simply a possibility in terms right. of him tracking uh, that she might have been panicked about the mm. uh, about the dog treats. Mm. So, okay, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Would you please stop? Sorry, I'm asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Okay, Sorry, now I'm she's I'm panicking. Let's stop come it close again. So she, she looks up and she sees that he's filming. So this is where she starts to become outraged. And uh, some people are very, um, very touchy about being recorded. Mm. Um, so one of the possibilities, again, an intervention for on his part would have been to put the camera behind him and say, I'm filming you because you're not leashing your dog. Mm -hmm. If you lease your dog, I'll stop filming. Because she's getting upset enough that she's losing the thread entirely. Mm -hmm. so, so those are interventions from his part. But as I said before, these are not his responsibility to do. Yeah, and that's such an important part. It's not his responsibility. But what I'm hearing you say is that, or, or what's obvious here is that he is regulated and she is not. And so yeah. that he might have more choice available to him. Yeah. Although he may be very care, he may be very, have a very deep uh, care for wildlife. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's got him in a state where he doesn't have access to some choices that he may have had. He may be very determined to protect and care for the species mm -hmm. that he's seen come back. I think they the birders in New York right. have seen the species come back from this ground being protected. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about interventions that she could make. And then mm -hmm. let's also talk about bystanders. Mm -hmm. So interventions that she could make would be already back when she sees him recording mm -hmm. her to turn around so that her face is not visible mm -hmm. and to call out to him. I am so terrified of being recorded. I can't function. I can't leash my dog. So this is a movement into transparency, which is not uh, probably available to her, as you've pointed out, Leonie. But mm -hmm. it's something that we can learn to do in our practice of what is it like to be human and use language at the same time. We can actually begin to use language mm -hmm. to say what's happening for us. Mm. So or training. she's wearing a hoodie. Yes, go ahead, Nika. So with training to give a play-by-play -play of our intentions and our yeah. actions at the same as yeah. simultaneous. Mm. 
for her to be able to say aloud, I'm shaking, I'm terrified, I can't leash my dog, you're recording me. She could also put her jacket hood up. She's wearing a hoodie. She could put her jacket hood up so that she's not so visible, so that she was taking care of herself a little bit instead of trying to make him change his behavior to take care of her. So, um, safeguarding her privacy without making it his, uh, yeah, yeah. putting the onus on him to change. Right, right. Which is, and what I would also <laughs> love for any of us who are in this situation is to ground ourselves in the in the, sort of the larger theme of what's happening. So it would be wonderful if she could have said, I understand you really want me to leash my dog. I don't understand why yet, but I'm going to leash my dog because it appears to be so important to you. Like then he would exist for her. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't exist for her, which is the whole, I love that word, Leone, lethal. The lethal quality of white supremacy is that the others, whoever they are, you know, and you know that the Ku Klux Klan in Maine didn't have any African American people to target, so they targeted Catholics and burned down Catholic churches and put in burning crosses on Catholic lawn uh, mm -hmm. yards. So when you go to Maine, you actually see that there are Catholic churches everywhere else in the world. The Catholic church is right in the middle of town. In Maine, the Catholic church is off in a valley so that it's more protected and not so obvious as a target. So it doesn't matter who the other is to the white supremacist. What matters is that there's a hierarchy that they get to be at the top of. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who the others are. It just matters that there are others and that we target them. And what this does when we other people and create in groups and out groups is we get a dopamine and oxytocin reward. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's part of the unfortunateness of us being humans is that we get like in some way for me, even in this moment, othering Amy Cooper, who I'm probably more like than not like I get to, I get to go, Oh, she's not me. I get to separate myself from her. I get to have a rush of dopamine and oxytocin because I'm creating an out group. She's in the out group. I'm satisfied and calm because she's out there. And this is the horror. And this is why I use that term, the banality of evil. This is the horror of our human brains and the toxicity of, um, of colorism. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely terrifying one of the two that i find sorry Mika, would you go ahead no go ahead okay one of the things that i find really interesting is that the very things that you describe that these are systems and they're being expressed right now in terms of individuals that are yeah. communicating or failing to communicate so it's not as though um i would imagine that amy cooper in this case is um in any way aware of or would even attribute to herself the sense of othering or not being able to see Christian Cooper or any of those things. And in That's fact, important. in the aftermath, mm -hmm. in her apology, she says, I am not a racist. Yes. Which is absolutely bewildering. Yes. Yet common. <laughs> <laughs> Yet common. Yeah. Yes. yes. So it's yes. That, for, for me, it's like, it brings up the question around how... Um, the systemic shows up in individual behavior, and yet um, individuals are divorced from um, from the the systemic beginnings of that that lead to their actions. Yes. So Amy Cooper would not necessarily see that um, much of her existence or her identity is tied to white supremacy. Right. Yet white supremacy is a thing that is driving much of her behavior in this particular um, yes. instance. Yes, throughout, even before the recording begins, mm -hmm. the fact that she's being asked to do something she doesn't want to do by somebody who's in an other group. Mm -hmm. And then by saying, I'm not a racist, then you're trying to seek, I, you know, I'm, I wonder, I'm speculating, 
trying to seek uh, safety and refuge on the side of history, like on the side of, 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 of what's right. Like there's a counter narrative that racism is bad. And so then trying to, to, um, to, be, to not be targeted by it and yes. aligning with the, right. the moral uh, force. Right, right. And as someone, as a commentator, I believe it was Karen Hunter said when she was watching this video, she said she, she is very careful to use the correct language. She says, an African-American man is, uh, is threatening me, you know, <laughs> so I think that's sort of where she's uh, believing that she's not being racist because what's happening systemically in terms of her leveraging white authority or, uh, and I really like um, I really like uh, Re Rezma Nimenakem's mm -hmm. uh, work with this, where he says we have white bodies, we have black bodies, and we have police bodies. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's sort of a, a, an implicit part of this narrative is the trauma that we've done to police bodies, because in any city, in any large city in the United States, if you call the police, you're likely to get police of different ethnicities but you're still leveraging this systemic power against folks who have not had or who have less systemic power so she's calling on i, I so it's almost like we could say she's calling on white supremacy to come in but it's almost like she's calling on the our white supremacy induced trauma of police bodies right. to come in and to, and to uh, dominate and make her right right mm -hmm. but she doesn't need to call for a white police officer right any police officer will do because yeah. they're of the same system right and any gender police officer will do because mm -hmm. they're of the same system mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right we'll get started again thank you Please don't come close to me. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Please tell so, them what it's like. So we're hearing this, this outrage in her voice, and we're hearing his. I think we're hearing his incredulity. Mm -hmm. So what would be happening um, if he were to go farther? Now, this is an intervention from him, and I don't believe he's responsible to do an intervention. But what if he were to go farther and say, excuse me, you're calling the cops because you don't want to leash your dog? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think he gets that she's freaking out because he's recording her. But I do think he is leveraging the recording to try to get what he wants. And mm -hmm. it probably becomes more powerful when she tries to take the phone away from him. Yeah, because now she's letting him know, you know, you 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 have some power here. That's that now. I'm not. I'm not. But I'm not going to stand for that. And she's then calling the police. Mm -hmm. So on her part, what I would want from her would be, again, more self responsibility. Mm -hmm. I would want her to be able to say, I'm. You're telling me not to come close to you. I need you to stop recording. I need you to stop recording. I need you to stop recording. And for him to be able to say to that, for that to make space for him to say, I'm going to stop recording if you just leech your damn dog. And so there's something that can happen when we step into transparency and vulnerability, no matter who we are. It's a, it's a systemic power equalizer. And it invites people out of the systemic because they're both in the systemic into the personal. Mm. And I'm, I'm realizing we're not catching bystander interventions. So we could, we could add that now, or we can go back through and talk about. It. Well, I'm actually curious though, like in the very kind of commentary, it seems to me that bystanders might be better equipped in this configuration. Yeah. To be able to give that commentary. Yeah. Yeah. They're not active. Yeah. In, in the interaction. Right. So you perhaps see that like, oh, if you turn, if you don't, if you stop at the camera, she might be able to leash her dog. Exactly. Or they can uh, clarify 
from or if if you leash your dog he'll stop recording you yeah exactly <laughs> exactly. remember his issue yeah. i mean this is what i want a bystander to do i want a bystander to put their body in between the two of them mm -hmm. and to say to her you're scaring the birds he loves birds he just wants you to leash your dog are you capable of responding like to bring that grounded yeah. request based you know information full yeah. uh yeah yeah that's really, yeah that go here yeah. to the front part of her brain yeah yeah but. and also by saying he cares about the birds also calling into her heart like do you get it this is a man who loves birds more than anything else your dog is not good for the birds do you get it <laughs> but she's on a is she is she so freaked out that she's is she afraid that she's going that her identity will be lost and she'll be erased like is she on that level of freak out mm -hmm. that she is calling in the cops so, who could erase him literally yes some people are so terrified of being so panicked so horrified about being recorded that they're they become really crazy i'm oh, sorry that's a judgment they become really unconnected to reality Changed, yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they yeah like it just seems to me that a, a bystander could be quite powerful one of the things that i talk about when i'm doing bystander intervention nonviolent bystander intervention is that we want to give the person who's targeted as much choice as possible mm -hmm. and so um how i would slightly do differently what it is that you suggested is i, is I would have the bystander ask, in this case, Christian Cooper, is this what it is that you're wanting? That you're wanting the dog oh, to be away from the birds. Uh -huh. and then to turn that language towards. Yeah, yeah, towards beautiful. So that you're supporting you're dialogue. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly, mm. yeah. Um, so someone mm. who perhaps is not, is not is, is in a place of having some regulation, who's not one of the main actors in the incident, but can, uh, can observe and help Help each help each of the people, the main actors, find their own language. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I, I really love that, Leonie, because then you track it back to his agenda. Yeah. Because if he just walks away, stops recording, then nothing has no, been done. No, no, no. Right? She's just freaked out, and, it, and she's won. Yeah, that's not why. That's why I said he wouldn't stop recording. He would just put the phone behind his right. back. Not, not that he would stop recording, but that the, yeah, he would acknowledge that she's terrified of it or freaked mm -hmm. out by it. Yeah, this is such an interesting question, Mika, about the matching obliteration. Is she so terrified of obliteration that she's willing to obliterate someone else? Mm -hmm. And yeah. <laughs> and that's that's I think that's a really interesting question for now because because of not only this incident but many other incidents like this, and then also connecting it to with the fact that at the because the the next day is the day that George Floyd was Killed. murdered by police. Yeah. So I think what's, what we're seeing now, certainly this is in terms of people that I'm connecting with, is more and more so-called white folks are like, I don't want to call the police, but, there's not, but they don't have options for who else to call. And so what I'm, what I'm hoping that people are getting from this conversation is you might have options available to you, certainly as a bystander. Yeah. Um, um, to not call the police, but also to support um, people who are in distress with each other to not make things worse, particularly when we're talking about the bodies of, we're talking about Black bodies and the fact that police, as we have talked about from their beginning, from their source, um, have, um, have kind of like this unstated mission around keeping Black bodies submissive um, in order to protect the interests of so-called white folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Shall we continue? Sure. This is a great discussion so far. Excuse me? I love that. <laughs> the politeness. And she gets away to take her face mask off. So she's social distancing. I'm sorry, I'm going to ramble. And here's a man African American who has a bicycle helmet. He's recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African American man. I am in such a heart. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. 
Unless she's invoking state oppression. <laughs> Say that again, Mika. Unless she's invoking the apparatus, the state yeah. apparatus. Yeah, yeah. She's entirely moving systemically. She didn't get to have personal power. She didn't have any sense that he was listening to her. And now she's escalating to a point where it's lethal over a dog leashing. I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm, I'm thinking again from the, pers the different perspectives that we talked about. Um, so there's actually less opportunity for them to interact as she's moving further away and has her attention towards the police. Again, again, if I were a bystander, is this really what you want? Mm -hmm. Is this? Do you understand that calling the police is is a is threatening someone with death, someone who's a person of mm -hmm. color, with mm -hmm. death? Do you understand? Do you understand? Is it so important to you not to leash your dog that you're willing to threaten someone with death? Mm. Yeah. I don't think it is. I don't think that's what's at stake. And I think if she were challenged, even here, by a bystander, yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, we're near the end. We'll just con let it continue. Okay. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. He leashes, she said. She leashes, he says, thank you. And he turns off the recording. Yeah. He's so focused. I kind of wish there was just a crowd of hippies with tambourines coming through to <laughs> take the, the attention off. Yeah. 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 Mm. It's, it's, uh, there's so much sorrow in me for the sorrow, sorrow and fear and outrage that Mm -hmm. that uh, that our white bodied beings leverage the system against mm -hmm. folks in ways that are lethal and i truly don't see how she could possibly have a conception of that lethality yeah it's very true people don't have it's interesting because um you know i've seen common comments i'm like she knew exactly what she was doing and i, I don't know that it's true because I don't think that people do actually understand how dangerous police are to black bodies right. because there is so much that is left murky and unseen and undiscovered with systemic oppression and particularly with white supremacy. Like there is not and there does not seem that unless people step towards that inquiry on their own, you know, through um, relationships that they have with people of color through reading, um, through studying it, um, you know, even reading some something like R Resno Manikin's book, which is really clear about kind of where um, linking this all back to trauma that is like centuries years yeah. old. Yeah. Um, then uh, people do they they don't ever get to catch that thread about what is actually happening. Yeah. And as long as we stay, this was something that I, um, that I saw Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. saying, he said, I, I thought everything would get better when we got body cams on the police, but mm -hmm. you folks have to actually care yeah. about what's happening and what you see on the body cams or nothing will change. Yeah. So, um, and sort of in that context, I mean, the uprisings with, mm -hmm. with so much, not just black participation, but participation from everybody, mm -hmm. it gives me hope uh, that there's, uh, that there's a, a more of a, of a full response mm -hmm. in, in response to uh, George Floyd, in response to... Um, to the to, it, it, just the, the response to the continuing sort of rolling horrors that that the that are coming from systemic oppression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, the hope 
comes from um, it's conditional, I think. Yeah. I'm yeah. seeing more and more people taking that kind of interest that we said has not really existed, like people are caring about what's happening. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm hoping that through like this conversation, which will be shared um, online um, and more, that, that there'll be more conversation about how to actually turn, um, how to actually create positive action that you can generate within yourself when you witness these things. Because mm. it seems to me, it, well, it, it, we're actually seeing it, um, that there's going to be more and more of these incidents, that we're mm. actually already seeing that, that it's part of the way that the friction that exists, uh, particularly in the United States between black and white, is being exercised, is that more and more um, confrontations like this are happening. That you know, are absent of the kind of politeness that we saw from yes. Amy Cooper <laughs> yes. and Christian Cooper. Yes. Um, there's more violence that's being visited on, on black and brown bodies. Um, you know, we, on this date, we're filming this on the 20th of June in 2020, there has been a, an increase in lynchings. There have been a lot more, um, um, the people engaging in intimidating behavior, um, and that's likely to get worse. And, and we're, in, we're in a pandemic right now, but everyone's going back to school and everyone's going back to work in September. And what are the, so the thing that I'm really interested in, in, interested in is what are the doable practical ways in which one can demonstrate their awareness around anti-Black racism? Mm -hmm. What are the practical ways that one can be anti-racist outside of expanding your understanding and expanding your mind. How can you intervene? What can you do once we're back together in whatever you know organizations, communities, configurations that we were that um, that we're currently not together because of the pandemic? What can one do? And so that's what I'm really grateful for this conversation because we've been able to name quite a few things about um, how people can intervene um, in in similar situations that may occur. Possibilities for showing up differently. Yeah, exactly it. Exactly it. And then that, for me, that that amplifies the hope. That uh, gives it some substance and some foundation. So I want to thank you. Thank you both for joining uh, me today and taking a look at this video and doing the review and the rich, really, really rich discussion um, for the benefit of our community and. Um, I hope that uh, if, uh, if there's another opportunity to do so, that we can uh, perhaps uh, revisit something like this again um, as we continue to look at ways of supporting people and being able to respond to um, racism and oppression during this um, unusually tense time. Thank you, Leonie. Thank you.